Leadership 101. What every leader needs to know. John C. Maxwell. What is this book about? Leadership 101 is a book that summarizes the author's insights and advice, distilled from decades of research and writing on leadership. Through this book, readers can find many inspiring stories, specific guidance to develop skills, cultivate qualities, and elevate their influence to become a true leader. Who is this book for? Business owners. Those who want to start a business. Students interested in learning about leadership. About the author, John C. Maxwell is a pastor, author, speaker, and consultant. He regularly conducts workshops on leadership and personal development around the world. He is also the author of many popular books, including The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, The Five Levels of Leadership, Developing the Leader Within You, Leadership Gold, and The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. This book will provide you with a closer and more genuine perspective on leadership. For many people, leadership is a relatively unfamiliar concept. They believe that only entrepreneurs and business owners belonging to the Fortune 500 group need to know and practice leadership. Additionally, many also think that leadership is an innate talent, not a skill that can be developed over time. However, these are just misconceptions about leadership. The truth is that anyone can become a leader and inspire others. Moreover, leadership abilities can be learned, nurtured, and developed over time. The above content is part of the message from this book. Furthermore, the author will also provide readers with lessons about good habits and ways to train their mindset to help enhance their leadership skills. Specifically, you will learn why we need to work smarter, not harder. How the 20 to 80 rule can help you trim down your to-do list. Why trust is considered the most valuable asset. Chapter 1. Leadership Elevates Success Leadership has become a popular topic in recent years. It is seen as one of the four essential skills that help us truly succeed in life. The other three skills are related to relationships, self-learning abilities, and attitude. Leadership expands the impact of these three skill groups. Why does leadership play such a crucial role? In fact, leadership is the thread that connects all other skills. Great leaders know how to prioritize and always work with discipline. Moreover, they also know how to build trust and direct people towards the most critical issues. In general, leaders create value from their vision and qualities, while effectively conveying those values. Thus, a good leader can make or break success in many aspects. Let's follow the story of Dick and Maurice to better understand this point. The two brothers, Dick and Maurice, opened a restaurant in Pasadena in 1937. Seeing a new opportunity as car culture exploded, they focused on serving food to customers in their cars, using porcelain and silverware. As a result, their company was hugely successful. By 1940, they began to reap substantial profits. But by 1948, this cultural wave was waning. They decided to switch to serving more affordable meals. Consequently, the new menu mainly consisted of burgers, and they switched from porcelain and silverware to paper and plastic. These changes helped them double their revenue and open a second restaurant. The story of Dick and Maurice McDonald might have ended there if it were not for the appearance of a visionary leader, Ray Kroc. The McDonald brothers wanted to grow their restaurant business but did not want to handle the opening of new locations. Kroc used his experience to convince Dick and Maurice to establish McDonald's Corporation and begin franchising their brand. Over the next four years, starting in 1955, they opened 100 more restaurants. Four years later, there were a total of 500 McDonald's stores across the United States. In 1961, Ray Kroc bought the McDonald's rights for $2.7 million. Today, McDonald's restaurants can be found in numerous locations worldwide. Indeed, Dick and Maurice McDonald worked hard and were very successful, but the true leader had to see the company's potential, develop a vision, 
and build a team to make the company a global phenomenon. So how can we apply this lesson to our own companies? The answer will be presented more clearly in the next chapter. Chapter 2. Leadership is a never-ending journey. Clearly, Ray Kroc is a legend in leadership. But it's not just top executives who need to learn and develop leadership skills. In fact, many business owners fail to recognize the opportunities and potential at their disposal. To begin developing this skill, you must understand that leadership is a journey consisting of four distinct phases. Phase 1 is accept that you don't know what you don't know. Whether you are stepping into a new role or deepening an important relationship, you can't possibly know everything from the start. Therefore, explore your blind spots to continuously learn and research. Understanding this is a crucial foundation for moving to Phase 2. Phase 2 is learning what you know you don't know. If you can consistently reach this stage, it shows that you are continually growing, which is a positive sign in your personal development journey. Successful leaders are lifelong learners who maintain the mindset, learn today to lead tomorrow. They turn reading books, listening to audiobooks, or conducting research into daily habits, and learning becomes an indispensable part of their lives. Excelling in this phase will make it easier to progress to phase 3. Phase 3 is having patience and trusting the process. In reality, no one can become a leader overnight. Even those born with innate talents must work hard to achieve this status. Initially, you may not be comfortable with the discipline and self-awareness required for personal development, but time will prove the effectiveness of continuous practice. Moreover, self-confidence will be reinforced over the years. This will provide the necessary conditions for moving on to the final phase. Phase 4 is when everything comes together and leadership becomes a natural part of who you are. As mentioned earlier, don't expect this to happen quickly. Leadership is, after all, a continuous practice. In fact, most successful leaders have plans for developing and refining their skills daily. Chapter 3. To lead others, you need to lead yourself first. According to the author's advice, discipline and perseverance are key components in the four stages of leadership. Let's now explore the simple steps to develop these qualities. First, to develop discipline, start by ceasing to make excuses. Many people fail to achieve their goals because we are really good at rationalizing our actions. Take the story of young football player Jerry, for example. One day in Mississippi, while his teammates were practicing, he hid in the locker room. However, Jerry realized that if he continued to avoid responsibility, he would become accustomed to this behavior. As a result, Jerry changed. Today, Jerry Rice is not only known for his exceptional leadership, but also for his daily training routine and strict self-discipline. According to Jerry, giving up is never a good thing, and this mentality has also influenced other aspects of his life. Once you've overcome the habit of rationalizing, it's time to change the way you use rewards to motivate yourself to achieve goals. Although these rewards help you develop discipline during the habit-building process, they can be likened to eating dessert before vegetables in the long run, they may bring negative effects. Therefore, if you have many great ideas but find yourself making little progress, it's possible that you lack self-discipline. Next, focus on the results you will achieve after the training process. This will help us avoid falling into a state of self-pity, which is the temporary discomfort of building new habits. Lastly, learn to prioritize in order to use time effectively. A popular business principle is the 20 to 80 rule. On average, only 20% of team members contribute to 80% of the team's success, and only 20% of projects generate 80% of revenue. Therefore, Successful leaders often devote 80% of their time to their top 20% priorities. You can also apply this principle to various aspects of life. For instance, allocate 80% of your time or resources to your top 20% relationships or priorities. As priorities change over time, always pay attention to opportunities around you to adapt promptly. However, we often don't recognize what is truly important until the opportunity has passed. To avoid this mistake, remember that having too many priorities can be exhausting. Therefore, you need to focus on what is truly important. 
The author's advice is to pay attention to the things that bring you the most joy. Chapter 4 Trust is the foundation and the most valuable asset of a leader. Throughout the development of your leadership skills, you will gradually understand the dynamics of trust. To better comprehend this, imagine that you have just started a new job and possess a bag full of money. Each time you make a correct decision, you can increase the amount in your bag, which also means you will have to pay the price for each wrong decision. Regardless of good intentions, too many wrong decisions will certainly leave you penniless. Similarly, every leader begins their new role with a certain amount of goodwill. Over time, this trust is built or lost based on the actions of the leader. There are three factors that help you build and strengthen trust, including competence, connection, and character. However, the roles of these three factors are not equal. For example, a leader who admits their mistakes or has shortcomings in expertise can easily gain sympathy from subordinates, especially if they are new or always trying to learn. However, if a leader violates ethics or trust, it will leave lasting negative impacts in the long run. Like self-discipline, character is the key to sustainable leadership success. A good character helps the leader convey consistency and motivation to the team, while demonstrating the ability to connect with those around them. It can be said that character is the means of transmitting a leader's respect for others. When a leader makes the right decisions, is ready to admit mistakes, and puts their subordinates' plans before their own, they will establish trust and respect to help the team grow. Once trust and respect are established, you will notice the true power of leadership becoming clearer. And that is also the content of the next section. Chapter 5 Influence is the measure of leadership success. From the beginning, the author has introduced that leadership is a vital skill that will help you amplify success. However, why do talented leaders make up such a small percentage of society? In fact, in business, even those without leadership skills can still use various tools to assert their position. After all, the business owner is still the one who controls the working conditions and salaries of employees. In the military, every soldier must strictly obey orders and regulations according to rank. Even in families, children often depend on and follow their parents' arrangements. However, for volunteer, charity, or religious organizations, it's different. In these environments, the true power of a leader lies in their influence. Influence plays such a crucial role for two reasons. First, without tools to force others to do something, you must find ways to create influence. This is the role of personal and character development. Therefore, pastors, educators, and leaders, in general, need to know how to demonstrate competence, connection, and character to guide everyone in the same direction. To create influence, leaders must have an accurate vision of the future of the project or any endeavor. If you cannot recognize the direction that aligns with the collective values or do not know how to convey it clearly and passionately, no one will be able to see that vision to work towards together. The second factor relates to time. A good leader knows how to inspire, helping others to achieve success in their own leadership journey. In other words, you can share the process of personal and professional development with those around you, such as your family or community. This will also help you expand the impact of your influence without additional time, effort, or cost. Inspiring others is also a way for leaders to maintain their influence. Great leaders always know that they don't lead alone, and there will come a time when they too must continue to advance. Therefore, preparing for the transition within an organization is also the leader's responsibility. The process of advising and training the next generation of leaders will help prolong the success of a true leader. At this stage, you have become a role model for those who follow. Not all leaders achieve this, but most of them leave a legacy, or in other words, the values that the leader has devoted their efforts to build. How can you create a similar legacy? The author's advice is always to wholeheartedly develop professional competence, connection, and character at all stages of leadership. The higher you climb in the leadership ladder, the more dedication is required but all will be commensurate with the prestigious rewards for true leaders. Main Message from the Book 
Leadership is a journey, and over time, it will impact many aspects of your life. To conquer the four stages of leadership, the author advises us to cultivate self-discipline, continuously develop professional and personal skills, learn to prioritize, as well as commit to lifelong learning. Gradually, you will see the benefits that leadership brings at various levels. According to the author, if you persist, you might even change the world. At its core, the measure of leadership is influence in other words, the ability to inspire others to develop their own leadership journey. Actionable Advice Prioritize resources for the top 20% of your potential employees. As you know, leaders always devote 80% of their time to the top 20% of their capable employees. Similarly, you should create a list of your own top 20% potential employees. Start by listing all the members of your team and ask yourself, if you didn't have the support of a particular member, would you be able to continue your business operations? Next, identify the 15 to 20% of employees who meet this criterion, and this is the group you should dedicate 80% of your time and resources to. Thank you for watching the summary of John C. Maxwell's book Leadership 101. This content is recorded and produced by Changes to Success channel. To support the author and learn more about the book, you can purchase the print version by clicking the Buy Print Book button in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like to encourage us and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more great videos coming soon. Thank you for watching this video, and we wish you success in your life.